to, but within Africa itself, that was a great event that had been forgotten. Concurrent with the slave trade, and almost at the same time it began, in inner Africa, the last of the great African nation states had not died. Sangue still existed and would exist up until 1591 when it was invaded by Morocco. The Arab influence came from East Africa, from the island of Zanzibar. Now, if you, the Arab influence came from what is now Kuwait and Oman, these East African Arabs, these Southern Western Asian Arabs, turned Zanzibar into one of the largest slave trading ports in the history. You want to know where did these slaves go? Some of them went to Asia. Some of them were traded with the Portuguese. But the Arabs at a given time took uh, up to 30, 40 million Africans out of Africa. The Arabs. Yeah, and except for the energy and the manpower and the organization, that the Arabs and the Arab slave trade drained out of Africa, Africa would have had enough energy and organization to resist the European slave trade. The Arab slave trade was one of the great tragedies in the history of Africa. And it is a tragedy equal to, if not surpassing, the European slave trade. When the Iranians who invaded India took over, they did not trust indigenous armies. So they began to use Africans as mercenary soldiers. And some of these soldiers were slaves. Some of them were just paid soldiers. Some of these Africans rose to high positions in the armies of India. Some of them were great generals. In mm. fact, the river Ganges is named after an African general. Mm. That's not even an Indian name. There was an Indian named Malachi who became governor of Bengal. This is outlined so beautifully in a little book by Joseph Harrison. Professor, former professor of history at Howard University and former head of the history department mm -hmm. uh, called the African Presence in Asia. That's another unexplored aspect of African history. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know the history of the Arab slave trade, that you should study UNESCO documents too, uh, part of the many documents uh, attendant to the rewriting of the history of Africa. And it gives you the documents dealing with slave trade in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. Now, if you study the Nigerian woman, Madame uh, Tanabu, who was in the trade for local consumption, when she discovered that the people that she was capturing and using for local consumption were being taken out of Africa, not returned, she began a war on the trade mm. and fought the trade to a standstill and fought all the kings in the business, including the king of then Abukuru. And this is well recorded. And part of the story that there was a man asking for her hand because her husband had killed, asking for her hand in marriage. Mm -hmm. And she told him that she had a man's work to do and she was not a woman until she finished it. And her job she considered to be was to 
pulled from the throne every king in the, tra in the slave trade. And when she, the last one was no longer king, she turned to the man that had been asking for her, her hand in marriage and said, okay, I will marry you now. I'm a woman. Now I'm a woman. I finished the man's work. This so is now I'm a woman. Married me and went to a place called Joe's in Nigeria. Ah.